Six, welcome to my ICC number one presentation on sociocultural markers. So in the presentation, you said that we needed to pick five different sociocultural markers that we wanted to talk about. So the five that I picked are citizenship, geographical origin, race, socioeconomic status, and educational level. So starting out with citizenship, I personally identify myself as a U.S. citizen. I was born and have lived my entire life, including now, in the United States, so I very much identify as being a U.S. citizen and the things that come with that. For the next one, we have geographical origin. So I was, I've been all over the United States, um, but I picked the f like five different areas that I personally identify with and that I've spent my most time in. So I was born in Indiana, um, Indianapolis, but I grew up in Brownsburg, Indiana until I was age six. So growing up in Brownsburg, Indiana, there's not a lot of diversity in, of people who live there. It's majority of the people who live there are white. Um, so growing up, I didn't have a very diverse childhood. It wasn't until I moved to Phoenix, Arizona that I got introduced to the Asian culture, the Native Americans, um, Hispanics. And I actually love it a lot more because I see how great America is and how it relates more to back then it was the melting pot, but now we consider it the salad bowl. And it wasn't until I moved to Phoenix that I actually believed that. I mean, being in kindergarten, you just adapt to what you're given, but it wasn't until I moved to Phoenix that I was more of a, like, in a culture shock because there were other students in my classroom who didn't look like me, and I felt like it was really cool and, like, they are the same people, and we all are U.S. citizens, and I thought that was super great to learn and be emerged in such a young age. However, when I started middle school, um, it wasn't the same case. I lived in a wealthier neighborhood and the school that I was moved to from middle school, from elementary school, had mostly white students. It wasn't, there was another middle school that was down the street from me, like maybe five miles away from us, from where my school is, that they had a lot more students who were more diverse, introducing like African Americans, Asian, Spanish, um, all those different kinds of students. But at my school, it was more, majority of us were all white, which was interesting for me because going from an elementary school that was very diverse to a middle school that wasn't diverse, it probably wasn't the best thing for me because that's where you start to like learn and identify yourself more and that's where you're trying to figure out who you are as a person so that was kind of really bad and the same case happened for me in high school as well so the one thing that confuses me to this day is that the community that I went to elementary school in is the same community that I went to for middle school and high school but there was just like a clear divide between the community that I lived in that was more white and the other half of the community that was more diverse. And based off where I went to elementary school, it picked where I went to middle school and where I went to high school. And my parents just kept me in there, but I didn't have a lot of diversity in my high school or middle school career. And I feel like that played a big factor and I feel like trying to relate to my students now I do a lot of research and ask them a lot of questions when I get the chance to, but personally I feel like based off if I tell them like if they ask where I went to high school, I feel like there's already like a stigma so it's kind of concerns me. But as of now, I live in Tempe, Arizona because I am a student at ASU. Alright, so the next one is race. I identify myself as a white person, however that is not where my roots come from. I may look white, um, however. My ancestors are German and European. They were on the Mayflower and they came to the United States. Next we have socioeconomic status. So I am a college student at ASU, I'm a junior. I'm currently studying to get my degree in special education and elementary education. And I am a part-time nanny. And my educational level, my high school degree from Desert Vista High School, and I, I got that in 2017. I'm currently pursuing my bachelor's degree in special and elementary education at Arizona State University. 
And then in the future, I want to pursue getting my master's in speech pathology. The next question we have is, how did these sociocultural markers influence your educational experiences? So like I mentioned before, growing up in Indiana, there wasn't a lot of diversity, and I was lived in a very like sheltered environment. I spent a lot of time with my family and my parents' friends and their kids. Um, it wasn't until I went to like preschool that I, there were more. Um, but ever since I was a kid, I've always loved lending a helping hand and seeing the benefits that come from helping others. So that's where I became, that's where I've always just wanted to help others. So originally when I was a kid, I wanted to be a vet. <laughs> I loved animals and still do love animals to this day. However, I don't do needles and I don't do blood. Um, I'm willing to help when there is. Originally I wanted to be a vet, but I don't do needles or blood, but my mom has always been a teacher and so have multiple people in my mom's family and my dad's side of the family. So that's just where I've kind of been like immersed into growing up around teachers and that played a big factor in deciding what I wanted to be. So being submerged into that, I've been adapted to see like the different kinds of teachers, the different perks that come with it and the different benefits that come with it as well. And the main benefit that like I want to be a teacher is because I just love helping students and having them achieve new skills and seeing like how great and how much it like makes their lives and it impacts them on a daily basis. A lot of the students that I deal with now, school is their safe place and where they need the structure and they constantly get the structure. And I feel like that's just great because it's a safe environment for them to come and to learn. So I just want to continue that and help them grow in their knowledge and become the successful people that they want to be. All right, last question is, do your socio-cultural markers intersect? If so, are there any simultaneous impacts? I said yes. The two that intersected for me were citizenship and geographical origin. Um, I am an American citizen and have identified myself that uh, for my entire life. Um, I personally have been to other countries and that's where it's kind of hit hard for me for my simultaneous impacts because going to other countries I witness how different it is based off the US than it is to other countries. I've been to first world kind of third world countries to see how different it is. Most of the students that I have dealt with in the past on my internships and still to this day are from Mexico and they don't speak much English or some have learned to speak English. I'm working with middle schoolers now, so it's a lot different than my past internship where I worked with first, first graders and they didn't speak much English. So coming from that, it's impacted me realizing that not everything is the same. They don't come from clean countries as clean as America. They don't have the same rights and freedoms or advantages that we do when it comes to freedom of speech and safety and you don't think about each day that not everyone has so that's impacted me as a person and becoming a teacher and just about when becoming a teacher all right that's all i have for you today uh thank you for listening in and have a great rest of your weekend